thank all deputies for their contributions uh, to this evening's debate. I know the thoughts of everyone in the House very much remain with the victims of the appalling attack which took place 12 days ago outside Gaelskull Colossal Wirra and my thoughts in particular are with the young child and her carer who are both still in a critical condition in hospital and of course we are all wishing for their full recovery. Uh, I know Deputy MacDonald has left the chamber and I think my colleagues uh, have responded to her comments well but if I could just say one more thing both myself, myself and Deputy MacDonald attended a meeting recently uh, and we both know what was asked of us by parents and Deputy MacDonald has failed miserably this evening to fulfil that request by parents. It's a great honour to be Minister for Justice, Ken Corlea. I see it as my duty to build stronger, safer communities, to ensure that people are safe, that they feel safe, to support victims, to back on Garda Shia Khanna, our court service, our prison officers and to use the time that I have as Minister for good. And there are challenges. I've never said there aren't. Of course there are challenges. But I believe that we are making real progress in addressing them. Resourcing our Gardaí, tackling domestic, sexual and gender-based violence, introducing tougher sentences and giving communities a real say and how they can be part of safety in their own community. All of this being progressed under my watch. And of course we all want more Gardaí. But we have a larger budget than ever before. 2.31 billion euro will be spent next year, a 23% increase again since I became minister. Recruitment into Angarda Shia Khan is building momentum following a closure post-COVID. People might not want to admit that, but the college was closed to new recruits for almost two years. We would have had 1,000 additional Gardaí to what we have now if it had not closed. Again, we can ignore it, but it is a fact. Between 700 and 800 new recruits will enter into the college this year. That momentum will continue and next year we will have a new recruitment campaign for Angarda Shia Khanna and for our Garda Reserve. We've increased the training allowance by two thirds. We've increased the age at which members can enter into Angarda Shia Khanna from 35 to 50. We've also increased the staff by over 50% since 2015. These are staff doing excellent work but also they've freed up 900 members on the front line and we will do more not just to support new members, but also those who are current members of Angarda Shia Khanna. We're building new stations. We have the highest number of Garda cars and vans ever. As Gardaí build international law enforcement coalitions to bring crime gangs who spread misery in our communities to justice, we support them. Again, that includes government today, only today deciding to open negotiations with the United Arab Emirates on an extradition treaty. I've passed a series of laws to protect victims to punish perpetrators. We've doubled the maximum sentence for assault causing harm. We've increased the sentence for conspiracy to murder to life. I've worked with colleagues in government to increase the sentence for assaulting a Garda member or an emergency worker. I've worked with Deputy Nocton across the House to improve post-release supervision for sex offenders. We have standalone offences of stalking and non-fatal strangulation. And only last week, last Wednesday, we passed legislation to allow Gardaí to roll out body-worn cameras starting in Dublin city centre next year. And I will introduce facial recognition technology to support Gardaí even further. Can Corley tackling domestic, sexual and gender-based violence, as colleagues have alluded to, it has been one of my top priorities. And I've been very fortunate on some occasions to have the full support of the House. I was glad to have the support of Deputy Daly, Deputy O'Riordan and others when we passed the bill to establish a new domestic violence agency called Cuan, one which will be up and running in January. Legislation to update or incitement to hatred laws to introduce hate crimes, again, was supported almost unanimously in this House. Our zero tolerance plan, I believe, will have a real effect in taking ec the epidemic of domestic violence and dealing with it once and for all. It is important to remember what we're talking about. Every single day in this country, women are being abused, strangled, beaten. They're victims of course of control. They're stalked, they're sometimes stabbed and even worse. So we're doubling the number of refuges to support them. We'll have dedicated family courts to meet the needs of families at moments of real difficulty. We're reforming education and raising awareness of the real attitudes which underpin so much of this violence and abuse. Working with Deputy Howland, again, across the House, we enacted laws to criminalise intimate image abuse. I've increased funding to frontline organisations who protect victims to record levels. I've established a victims forum to make sure that all victims of every crime have a say when it comes to laws, when it comes to policy, when it comes to services. And separate to these issues, 
we've introduced a series of measures to help bring down the cost of insurance. We've rebalanced the duty of care and building on the wonderful work of my colleague Deputy Flanagan, I introduced personal injury guidelines. <coughs> I have a plan to build 600 more prison spaces and to Deputy O'Raven's point, actions have been brought forward to deal with mental health and addiction problems with prisoners' actions from an excellent plan set about and chaired by your own colleague or former colleague Kathleen Lynch. We've appointed 24 additional extra judges this year to speed up our courts. This is the record that I stand on and I am proud to stand over. I've also listened to those who have concerns about safety in Dublin. We have a wonderful capital city, enriched by the many nationalities in it. I understand that every person living in it, working in it, who visits it, wants to feel safe and be safe. And I know that that's not always the case. I know that. I've listened to the experiences of those living and working in the city, not just in the last few weeks, but over the last number of years. And that is why we opened O'Connell Street Station. That's why we reopened Fitzgibbon Street Station. That's why we launched Operation Citizen to prioritise high visibility policing. That's why 10 million in extra overtime was allocated to complement the work of the 3,742 Gardaí who currently work in Dublin. But we all know that policing cannot solve it alone. We've all said this in the chamber here. We must be mindful of the responsibility that we ask of our city centre in shouldering accommodation many vulnerable people. I've established a new partnership in the North Inner City and that's to bring everybody around the table. And Garda Shia Khanna, members of the Oireachtas and local representatives, community representatives, health providers, education providers, all with the intention of making sure that everybody has a say in their safety. We've doubled funding to youth justice, working closely with Minister Brown. And because of the reforms of Angarda Shia we now have dedicated community policing teams in our city centre, further strengthening the bonds between Gardaí and the communities that they serve. And of course, the more Gardaí we have, the stronger those teams can be. Can call it the scenes we saw in Dublin on the 24th or 23rd of November, December were disgraceful. November, apologies. Seeing people exploit an appalling attack on school children to loot, to riot and burn shocked us all. And these thugs and criminals will be brought to justice. And Garda Siakana contained the riot. They restored law and order in the space of hours. And the men and women who put themselves at risk will always have my support. The same cannot be said for Sinn Féin. It has been quick to fall back on its usual playbook of division and disunity of using an appalling situation to play politics and to point score and to once again undermine on Garda Siakana. It's worth repeating, Ken Corley, when I pick up the phone to ring the Garda Commissioner or to talk to Garda, it's to offer support. When Sinn Féin pick up the phone, it's to call for the resignation of the Commissioner. It's 12 days on, a week since the last debate, and nothing constructive has come from Sinn Féin benches. When people want stability, they want instability. Their mantra is to sack Sue and Bully. Deputy MacDonald wants to fire the Garda Commissioner. Deputy O'Brien wants to fire civil servants who disagree with him. When we need calm heads, when our own citizens are in trouble abroad, they want to expel ambassadors. When journalists report facts freely and fairly, what do they do? They sue. Anyone in their own party with an independent thought is bullied until they comply or leave. It might surprise Deputy MacDonald to know that this is not an episode of The Apprentice. You can't fire your way out of a situation. It's a serious business that requires judgment and leadership qualities she and her party repeatedly fail to show. So let's ask ourselves, Ken Corlea, if Sinn Féin were in government, if Deputy MacDonald was Taoiseach, after sacking the Minister for Justice, after sacking the Garda Commissioner, who would she turn to for advice? on security and policing? Would it be the same Republican family who said it was okay to ignore COVID rules for a political funeral? The same group of people she consulted before she unashamedly politicized policing in the past because it is nothing new. When Gerry Adams was arrested and questioned as part of the investigation into the murder of Jean McConville, she said that it was politically contrived. She immediately sought to undermine the commissioner when he was appointed in 2018. And now again, Sinn Féin attacks the commissioner and our Gardaí again, time and time again. And I will quote a line that I know Deputy MacDonald will know because she quotes this poet regularly. When someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. No matter how they try to fool the Irish people, their first instincts are still the same. Undermine and attack our Gardaí. So disunity and division, when people want unity and when they want leadership. 
It's been a difficult few weeks, Ken Corley, for the victims, above all, of the recent attack, for their families, for their communities, and they remain at the forefront of my mind. So too is the safety of Irish people. All of my actions during this time in office have been taken to make sure that people are safe and that they feel safe. It is for that reason that I will continue to work to build stronger, safer communities, and I will not be deterred by a Sinn Féin party which seeks to show division and disunity for its own ends. Thank you. Uh, thank